Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A new report on Russian disinformation prepared for the Senate shows the operation's scale and sweep. What the report, which is the first to analyze millions of posts, says about Russian interference today. Plus, it is cold outside. Brandon Rue is tracking our forecast and what the forecast looks like for these last few days before the Christmas holiday. And an intruder shoots and kills a man inside of his own home, prompting a manhunt to find him, where efforts stand to find the suspect and a first look at the victim who tragically lost his life. And breaking news from Detroit tops our news this noon as we take a live look at a very active scene. A 45 year old man was found dead with a gunshot wound to his head. It happened a little before 1030 on the 3100 block of Newport. This is near Mack Avenue and Chalmers on Detroit's east side. Police are investigating the incident as a homicide. No word yet on any arrests or any motive for the shooting. We do begin on a sad note this noon of a developing story we've been following for you throughout the morning from Detroit's west side. An intruder shoots and kills a man inside of his own home. Police say that that intruder got into the home on Prevost Street near Greenfield and Grand River through a window. This is video from the scene. Larry Spruill is following the story for us. And Larry, are police making any progress in terms of a description or trying to track down the person responsible for this tragedy? Good afternoon, Rhonda. Police say this is still a very active investigation. Police say everything happened at that home right across the street, that brown brick home that you are currently looking at. Now, I have been speaking with family members all morning. They did not want to talk to me on camera because they are upset, but I did just speak with the best friend. He tells me this is a tough time for the family. But this is this is terrible. That's how this neighbor who did not want to be identified describes a deadly home invasion close by his home. Police said someone broke into this home on Prevost Street near Greenfield Road and Grand River Avenue through a window early Monday morning. That's when the 40 year old homeowner went downstairs to see what was going on. Police said the man and the suspect got into a fight and the homeowner was shot. As of right now, police are still looking for the gunman. I mean, Douglas, he wasn't that type of guy. He didn't deserve to go out like this. For him to die inside of a home invasion, like, that's crazy. And crazy indeed, and the family just tells me that he was just protecting his girlfriend of 10 years and his two little kids. They were also inside at the time of the shooting. Meanwhile, coming tonight at five, I'll tell you what his best friend has to say to the person who shot his friend. We're working on that story all new tonight at five. We're live on the choice West side, Larry Sproul, local four. Larry, thank you. And our prayers go out to that family. A Monroe County man is jailed this Monday afternoon facing home invasion charges. 36 year old Chad Norita of London Township is charged with breaking into a home and stealing items. He's also facing firearms charges. The Monroe County Sheriff's Department says that it found suspected stolen items in his home, along with items stolen from other homes in London and Milan Townships. Investigators say that he is a suspect in those home invasions as well. A former Westland police officer and two Westland paramedics are in court today for a hearing to determine if they will stand trial for involuntary manslaughter. Sergeant Ronald Buckley and paramedics Matt Descola and Leah Maynard are charged in the death of William Marshall. Marshall was locked up last December for drug possession when he went into convulsions. He died from co uh, cocaine toxicity. Prosecutors say that Marshall got no medical attention for 90 minutes. Buckley has since been terminated by the Westland Police Force for violating department policies. Marshall was locked up last December for drug possession when he went into convulsions. New at noon, images of some serious damage in southwest Detroit. Take a look at this truck in the overpass near West Grand Boulevard and Risden Streets. That was too low for this Sarah Brothers produce truck and it hit the bridge. No word yet on any injuries, but as you can see, the roof of that truck was sheared right off.
turning our attention to the weather on this Monday as we take a live look at what will be a busy spot. Metro Airport out in Romulus, also in Ann Arbor, overlooking the big house in downtown Mount Clemens. Kind of a gloomy view out there. We had sun for a little bit, but it looks to be fading in the clouds, Brandon. Not much happening out there. The wind with a cold front ushering the clouds in and keeping those temps on the cool side. You see Pontiac mid teens for a wind speed out of the northwest. We have a 12 mile an hour wind at Metro Lapeer 14 mile an hour wind and does create a bit of a wind chill 37 the air temperature but can knock 5 to 10 degrees off of that with these breezes that'll be fairly consistent for the next several hours. So prepare for wind chills mainly in the 20s, we have right here at 37 degrees holding steady, if not falling off a little bit as this cool front comes through, but it is a dry cool front, just more clouds and more wind. There's a look at it right here and it's still sweeping through. You can see the clouds, it's dragging a little bit of moisture possible with these winds coming off of Lake Huron for Southern Ontario. That is about it. We do have more sun and warming 40s and a storm to look at coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. A study conducted by private researchers are revealing the Russian interference in the U.S. social media platforms is still going on. The report prepared for a Senate committee finds Russian operatives remain active on social media and have infiltrated Internet games and music apps. The study faults Facebook for downplaying Russian involvement on its Instagram app, saying that there are more engagements with users on Instagram than on Facebook. The study concludes the U.S. will continue to see Russian interference for the foreseeable future. And breaking news involving ex-National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Two men involved in a Turkish lobbying campaign led by Flynn have been charged in a case related to the Mueller investigation. The case says that Flynn's former business partner, along with a Turkish businessman, conspired to covertly and unlawfully influence U.S. politicians on Turkey's behalf. The charges revealed the extent to which Flynn seems to be cooperating in the Russia investigation. And speaking of Michael Flynn, more developments will soon be unfolding in the Russia investigation. The former Trump national security advisor will be sentenced tomorrow for pleading guilty to lying to FBI investigators. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort is due in court next month to answer allegations that he lied to prosecutors after he entered a plea deal. And on Sunday, the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, ruled out letting investigators interview the president in the future. Giuliani says that would happen, quote, over his dead body. And political leaders in Washington are still reacting to a federal judge's decision last Friday that ruled Obamacare as unconstitutional. The judge's ruling focused on the individual coverage mandate. For now, the Affordable Care Act will remain in effect. Both Republicans and Democrats support the plan's protection for people with pre-existing conditions, but there is strong opposition to the mandate to have insurance or pay a fine. The individual mandate penalties 80% were paid by people, 80% of the people who paid the penalty mm. earned under $50,000 a year. So this hurt low and middle income families who couldn't afford the cost of health insurance. The state of California is already preparing to appeal the Obamacare ruling. The case may eventually be decided by the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, disputes regarding border wall funding may lead to a government shutdown before the end of the year. President Trump wants $5 billion, but Democrats are unwilling to agree to that, and any spending bill needs pipe bipartisan support to pass Congress. If no deal is reached, the federal government will partially shut down at midnight on Friday. Meantime, at the border over the weekend, it was a tale of two protests. Dueling rallies were held near the U.S.-Mexico border on Saturday. On one side, pro-border security activists. On the other, migrant supporters. The first group gathered on the bridge near the San Cedero port of entry. Many held signs reading Secure the Border and We Heart Ice at a nearby park. A group of religious leaders led a rally in support of the migrants. Meantime, demonstrators gathered to protest the death of a seven-year-old migrant girl who was in the custody of U.S. Border Patrol agents when she died.
The group met Saturday afternoon in El Paso, Texas. Many of the demonstrators held signs and chanting for justice. Seven-year-old Jacqueline Kale, she died while trying to enter the U.S. with her father, Gabe Gutierrez, reports on the investigation into her death. There's growing outrage over the death of a seven-year-old Guatemalan girl in U.S. custody. Jacqueline Kale, the new face of what some are calling a humanitarian crisis. Jacqueline and her father were among a group of 163 migrants who crossed the New Mexico border illegally earlier this month. She started vomiting and had a high fever as she was being taken by bus to a border patrol station 95 miles away. By the time she arrived and got medical attention, Customs and Border Protection says she'd stopped breathing. She was airlifted to a hospital in El Paso, where the Department of Homeland Security says she died the next morning of sepsis shock. After her death, DHS officials said that according to her father, Jacqueline had not been able to consume water or food for days. Advocates and an attorney for the father now dispute that. She had not suffered from a lack of water or food prior to approaching the border. In rural Guatemala, Jacqueline's mother says her husband took the seven-year-old on the dangerous journey to escape extreme poverty. The Trump administration is now calling attention to the dangers of human smugglers. It is a painful reminder of the ongoing humanitarian tragedy that is illegal immigration. In a written statement, CBP says that its border agents did everything they could to try and help that young girl. The DHS inspector general has now launched an investigation and congressional Democrats are promising one as well. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, El Paso, Texas. Gabe, thank you. Still to come, large protests break out in Europe, at some points turning violent. Find out what people are so upset about there. Also, we continue to follow breaking news from Detroit as we take a live look at an active investigation. A 45-year-old man was found dead with a gunshot wound to his head. It happened a little before 10.30 this morning on Newport near Mack and Chalmers on Detroit's east side. Police are investigating the incident as a homicide. No word yet on any arrests or any motive for the shooting.